right, what up Accelerate? We are doing Pie in the Face this week. Woo! Pie in the Face remix. So, we decided that we were gonna make it a trivia game and Pie in the Face combined. So, what we're gonna do is, Lisa is behind the camera and she's got some awesome trivia questions that we have never seen. And so, if we miss the answer to the trivia question, then that's the person that has to spin and see if they get a pie in the face. Most likely it'll be me. Okay, first question. How can a man go eight days without sleep? By staying awake. I know the answer. By sleeping during the nighttime. Ah, come on, man! Four. It's gotta go. <laughs> This is directed to you. A little girl kicks a soccer ball. It goes 10 feet and then comes back to her. How is this possible? She kicked it up in the air. <laughs> She's right! Oh, bam! She kicked it up in there. Have you ever I heard of that I had that one like <laughs> way before you even had it. I just was making sure that I was... You could say up in the air. Up Straight a hill, no. or it was oh. tied to a rope. Willie, if there are six apples and you take away four, how many do you have? And you take away four, you only have four. Correct. <sighs> what goes up and down but still remains in the same place? You know it? Mm-hmm. The sun? Incorrect. Stairs. Oh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense, too. Please be like... Four! Ow! Four! <laughs> Go click, click. It's got to click. Can I plug my nose? No. <gasps> you got lucky! <laughs> Willie, among the alphabet letters, which one makes honey? The B. Correct. <laughs> did you know that one? Yes. I did too. Horny. <laughs> if you jump off the roof of a three-story building, where would you land? On the ground. Incorrect. The hospital. Four. I think it's on the line. Can we make... Uh, according to the camera, it's four. has four legs but can't walk. A chair. Correct. Easy. Courtney. Yes. How do you make the number one disappear? This one's hard. You give up? Erase it, but that's too easy of an answer. Add the letter G and it's gone. You want, you want me to do it? You got it. Five. Oh. Five. I hope this goes. I'm praying, Jesus, please like this. <laughs> Willie. Yo. Who is our 38th president? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that a riddle? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> that is trivia. I would have to start from the top. You, you wouldn't know it. You know all the presidents in order. No, I'm going to go with Abraham Lincoln, though. That's the 16th president. <laughs> Golly. It's been. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Five. Yeah. Courtney. What element begins with the letter K? Potassium. No. That's what that's what it stands for. Crud! I was so confident. Yeah. No, isn't potassium K on yes. this? Element 
begins with the letter K. <laughs> Not what so else is K. <laughs> Spin it. Two. <laughs> Willie, what was the first planet to be discovered using the telescope in 1781? The date has really helped me out here. Um, I remember that date like it was yesterday. It's Mars. Let me go ahead and spin. <laughs> Your age is... <laughs> Four, of course. Oh, it's falling. Do it, do it, fast. <laughs> What is the minimum number? <laughs> what is the minimum number of musicians that a band must have to be considered a big band? Be a big band? Don't look at me. I don't. I don't have the answer. I don't know the minimum for just to be considered a band. That was not the question. <laughs> you could say that number though. No. Be a big band. <laughs> Seven. Ten. Oh, I was going to do it too. <laughs> Five. Yeah. Because Jesus does not like me. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. <sighs> what is the capital city of Spain? Granada. I don't know. Incorrect. Madrid. Oh, well. Granada. <laughs> Granada bar. <laughs> That's where we... No, so been. Very sad. It's got to be the capital, right? Oh, we needed two. Five. I think it's on the line. Nope. According to ah. this, it shows five. You always do that. Okay, so Willie totally got me and cheap shot at me on that game. So I'm gonna go talk to Lisa and I have a plan to get him back. So, hey, I need your help. What's up? So, we are gonna get Willie back because I kind of feel like the, the pie in the face game, he was kind of cheap about. So, okay. he just went into the bathroom. So, can, can you help me yes. get him in the face? Yes, okay. Let's go. of quarantine. Somebody please get me back to reality. Someone, please. How about day 35? What? It feels like 185. No, it's not 185. It it's for, for sure feels like 185. Well, <laughs> if it feels that long for you. Because I have to spend it with you. <laughs> Oh, you were going to say something negative about me, and I got something negative on you. How does that feel? It's, it's a loud house at our house. It ain't loud. Oh, so get this. In case you want to know about our life in a really quick manner, <laughs> on, what was it? On Friday. Friday comes, and this is completely sidebar. I'm sleeping. Courtney comes to our bedroom and goes, Hey, Willie! Well, you know, I'm just so miserable and my life is so horrible. <laughs> that is not how I started it. <laughs> um, so this is how I wake up and she goes, look what I found. And I was like, what'd you find? A standard black poodle. So guess what the Bard House finally got? We have a dog. We now have a standard black poodle. Yeah. Two kids, a wife, and now a poodle. He's so blessed. I'm so blessed.
Uh, what are we talking about? All right, so last week we talked about roots and making sure that you are grounded in something that could sustain you even through the hard times in life. And this week we want to talk to you about thriving. So when something is growing, that means it's thriving. And so sometimes we kind of push ourselves to search for, work towards um, mountaintop moments, okay? The mountaintop moments are awesome. They're exciting. They're exhilarating. But they're also momentary. Like, they don't last forever. And you if they hang, did... Don't hang out on top of a mountain no. because if a storm comes, boom, you're gone. Lightning hits the tops of mountains faster than anything else. I'm just saying. But if mountaintop moments happened all the time, then they wouldn't be so special. They wouldn't be so yeah. awesome. And That's so um, we want to talk about the times that maybe you aren't on the mountaintop. Maybe you're in the valley and talk about... Um, just like why why are there mountaintops and valleys in life and what is God trying to teach us through those so yeah so so mountaintop valley a lot of times that kind of we correlate that image to struggles in our life right normally we're like oh we're in the valley it's such a struggle it's so hard because I'm trying to climb up to the mountain peak and I know life will be so much better when I get to that mountain but realistically uh, in that valley, that time of struggle is is the time that we need the most. Right. Um, so, so realistically, if we look at at times of struggle and we look at times of mountaintop, um, for instance, going to the store right now yeah. is a struggle. All right. You go to the store and you're like. It can be kind of stressful, too, because well, you don't know if you're going to be able to find what you're going in for. For some of you, it's not being able to go to the store is right. a struggle, but maybe your mom and your dad, or maybe you do get to, your mom and dad allow you to go to the store, and, and let's say uh, everybody's struggling right now to find toilet paper, so it's so uh, relevant right now. So let's say you're going to the store to find that toilet paper, or you send your mom and dad, you're like, Mom, Dad, I've got one square left. Like, I'm about to have to wipe with my hand. Somebody <laughs> help me. Um, and, and they come back with toilet paper. That joy yeah. that you feel <laughs> in the moment to not have to dirty your hand, but to use that white, soft, snuggly paper on your rear end, that joy only lasts for a moment. The moment that you're done using the restroom to the moment you pull your pants up. That's that moment right there. It's like a... <laughs> mountaintop moment. That's a mountaintop <laughs> moment. I'm just saying. You wipe, you're done. Okay, okay. So... I'm talking about my mountaintop <laughs> moment. Why are you ruining this? Okay, go ahead. Your mountaintop's lasting a long time. <laughs> Alright, back on topic. So, struggle is real. Right. Above everything. So that's point number one for you guys. The struggle's real, and that's why the mountaintop is like the dream. That's why we push towards that, working towards that, because the struggle is real. It's hard some days, yeah. and so I, we just have to keep that in perspective and know that something better is coming. So with all of that, again, this, this first point that we're talking about is the struggle is real. That's why the mountaintop is the dream. Um, when when we talk about somebody that struggles in the Bible, we we have to look at at David. Um, above all, David, man, he got attacked by lions, bears. He had to fight Goliath. He um, was chased by a king. His sons uh, basically tried to take the kingdom from him. He disowned his own people or disowned one of his friends. His friends came to try to like. You he can definitely had it. valleys. In, he... in fact, if you read most of Psalms. A lot of it's, oh God, why is this happening to me? Right. Uh, but he always ends it with, no matter what happens, God, no matter what valley I'm in, yeah. I am going to serve you. Above everything else, I'm going to serve you. Um, David knew that in those valleys were the time that God created his character. Mm -hmm. And to a point that when he died, it says on his tombstone, a man after God's own heart. He lived in those valleys, and he took those valley, val, sorry, took those valleys as a chance to to get to know God. Uh, we challenge you guys every single week. Uh, right now, in this time of struggle and in this time of a valley, yeah, to to do simply 15 minutes. Right. Uh, we talk about the 15 minute challenge every single week. 
five minutes of prayer, five minutes of worship, five minutes of reading your Bible. Man, David took time to do that, maybe not 15 minutes, but he took time to put God as a priori priority in his life. Yeah. Um, and he lived in that valley. And, and he didn't always just look at, oh, there's, there's the mountaintop, there's the dream. Right. He lived the moment. And, and he allowed God to, to build his character in that moment. Yeah, even when he was like hiding in caves and running for his life, yeah. he was still leaning on God. Psalms 23, 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. God, you are with me. Yeah. So even when the days were hard and even when he was fearful or going through something that he just didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel even, he knew that God was going to sustain him. He was going to bring him through that. And that there was some... Something in there for David to learn to, you know, there was a reason that he was learning the lessons he was learning during that season. And so I think that's like really important to focus on during those times where you feel like I don't understand the purpose of this. Well, maybe that is not for now. Maybe that's for later for you to understand that and why, you know, the character that's building in you right now, like why do you need that? Well, God knows more than what we do and there are things down the road that that's going to prepare you for. And so really leaning into God during these times. Um, one of the things that we were noticing when we were looking through pictures of mountaintops and valleys and, and looking for some um, something ideas. just to see, yeah, yeah. Um, we started noticing that nothing grows on a mountaintop. Like the mountaintop view is pretty, but nothing grows there. Yeah, it's normally just rocks or it's just plain cold. snow. Yeah. Or it like it's the void of all life. Like, like, the mountaintop is there for the view, but it's not there for growth. Yeah, it's beautiful. You get to see where you came from and see the all the amazing things that, that's below. But realistically, if you look around on a mountaintop, just look straight down. It's usually rock. It's There's dead. nothing growing there. Like, and so I think that was something that we really, like, I don't know. It became more real to us in realizing that the purpose of the valleys is for the growth. Yeah. And so um, when you look at mountaintops, like there's no soil, there's no rivers, there's, you know, yeah. but when we looked at valleys, that's where the stream was yeah. and that's where the flowers were and that's where the trees were. And, and so... And the, and the walk up a mountain, like from, my dad used to take us uh, mountain climbing a lot. The walk up the mountain, it's so hard, but if you take a second to look around, yeah. That's where the most gorgeous things are. That's where the elk are, the rams are, the, the trees are, the that's light. where the waterfalls come from. Like, and in the moment you can cho choose to focus on the struggle that you're going in, or you can choose to say, okay, what's around me? What does God want to teach me in this moment? Um, which is, is so phenomenal. Uh, the another, the, another thing real quick to, to remember is, Every struggle is an opportunity um, for you to grow and, and for God to, to grow you. That doesn't mean that every struggle is God pointing down on you saying, I'm going to make him struggle or I'm going to make her struggle. Um, like, we can't say that God said, uh, this COVID-19 is uh, my punishment on the earth. No, but God can take this moment of quarantine this situation uh, and, and this moment of struggle to watch you thrive in your walk with Him. Um, so know that God doesn't purposely put struggle upon you, but He does you struggle to to pursue, take the moment to pursue Him. Our second point is everything grows in the valleys. Right. Absolutely everything. Uh, so God doesn't bring us to our valleys so that we like die there and that's the end and we're, you know, this is just as good as it's ever going to get. Yeah. God brings us to the valleys because there's growth there. There's right. life there. And that's when we can really dig into his word and really rely on him and learn that he is the only way we're going to make it out of this situation or make it through. Uh, but God will never take you to a place that he won't sustain you. And so it's important to remember that you're not in a valley alone. God is not going to leave you alone. He's not going to forsake you in your situation. When you are completely relying on God, he's not going to let you fail. And so it's about being vulnerable with God and what yeah. you're afraid of or what's frustrating you or what's um, 
you know, hindering you. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's whatever. Mm -hmm. But being transparent and allowing God to really work in your heart during those times where you're alone so that God can really, like, start to remake and remold um, your heart. Yeah, we, we talked about it a few weeks ago. Uh, the valley is a perfect time to tell God exactly what's going on in your life. Um, David did it so much uh, when he... Uh, when he went through a struggle, as you read through Psalms, like he tells God so much mm -hmm. about how he's frustrated, um, but he knew that in this frustrating season, in, in the valley per se, um, this was the, the perfect time for him to grow as a man of God, or a, uh, uh, but in your case, as a, as a, as a student in God. Um, this is well and it even says in Psalms 23 like I, I read it earlier but it says even though I walk through the darkest valley so yeah. David didn't plan on staying in that dark valley yeah he's, go he's, he's going he's going through it. it he knows that this is just a season and so whatever you're going through that is you know challenging struggling frustrating it's just a season and it's something that you're going through but you need to make sure you're not just going through it that you're growing through it and you're not just surviving that but you're thriving in that situation yeah. so you're really leaning on God so that he can sustain you through that it, and in Deuteronomy 31 8 it says the Lord himself goes ahead of you and will be with you he will never leave you or give up. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Basically the same thing Psalms 23.4 is saying. Just the simplicity of like, the moment that the, the struggle or, or that valley is real is the same moment that God has already went before you. Right. He knows the outcome of it, but He's also in the struggle with you saying, you know what? I'm here. Lean on me. Yeah. above all else. And I think you just have to remember that when you're standing by God in the valley and you feel all alone and you know that nobody is there with you but God, you have to remember that the one that's by you in the valley is the one who's going to bring you out of that valley. And so just remembering to let God sustain you during that season that's yeah. frustrating or exhausting, I mean, frankly, exhausting. Um, you just have to remember to let God sustain you because He's going to bring you through that valley, whatever it is. Yeah. So. And so real and here here's the key thing we we say it every single week is we can talk about this all we want but until you make God number one in your life and you put God as your priority being in that valley it's going to seem scary right it's going to be hard it's lonely and it's going to be lonely but when you decide okay God I'm done doing it on my own right I'm ready to put you in charge of my situation and, and, and in charge of my life. That's when God can come. Now, He hasn't left you, but that's when God can come and, and reveal Himself to you and say, you know what? I'm yeah. here. I'm going to take care of you. Um, so we don't want to pass up a single Wednesday without giving you the opportunity of uh, putting God number one in your life. Um, so let's do that now. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. For dying on the cross. For dying on the cross. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Make me new. Make me new. I make you. I make you. Number one in my life. Number one in my life. In your name. In your name. Amen. Amen. Man, if you made that decision today, man, let us know. Yeah. And there's nothing better than uh, letting someone know that you decided to put God uh, as your first priority in your life and then letting them celebrate with you. And then, second of all, you could be asking, how do I move forward with this walk with God? So when you let us know, that allows us to send you a gift. Right. And, 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 and come alongside you in this, yeah. new, in this new season of life. Um, it's important to have other believers around you, other people encouraging you through that valley yeah. to remind you that you're going through that. You're not stuck in it. You're going through it. And so we want to do that with you. We want to encourage you. We want to pray with you. We want to celebrate with you. So make sure that you send us a message or comment down below so that we know who you are and so we can get in contact with you. Absolutely. There are others of you that, like, you're just kind of in a frustrating season, whether it's um, fear, frustration, discouragement, um, sadness. 
it's kind of it's a bummer staying home all the time by yourself yeah. and so um we can just kind of get in seasons and we want to pray with you guys so if you've got something that you want us to pray about like hit us up on snapchat send us a let your message small group let your small group know. leader know so that we can be praying with you guys about these things even though we're not here on campus together like we love you and we're praying for you but if there's something specific that we can be praying with you about like let us send know. us a message yeah. let us know because we miss you guys we do we definitely miss you so let's pray go pray us out Jesus, we love you so much, and we thank you that you are the God that never leaves us, God. You are our sustainer, and you are our provider. God, we know that whatever season that we're in, God, whether we're on the mountaintop, God, we know that that's not going to last long, God. But in our next valley, you are going to sustain us, God. You are going to bring us through that valley greater, God. You are building character in us, God. And I just pray that right now in this time that we're at home and things are still, God, that you just let us to use this time to soak in your presence, God. We thank you so much. Just bless us and bless our students. In your name, amen. Amen. We'll see you next week, guys. See you week, next guys. week, guys.